If anything could sum up the topsy-turvy nature of yesterday, it's probably the changing emotions and mood of Stevie of this channel. You saw him in the reaction shortly after the drop points at Hibs yesterday. It's fair to say he wasn't in a great place. He was struggling, he was pretty dejected, but this was Stevie a few hours after that when news filtered through of Rangers' draw with Motherwell at Ibrox. As the legendary commentator Barry Davis once said, just look at his face. I think we enjoyed ourselves yesterday. Am, am I safe in saying that? It was, as I say, a really topsy-turvy day. It kind of summed up the whole title race so far. We had a really disappointing result and performance in the early game at Easter Road, we were just expecting Rangers to get the three points and narrow the gap at the top to a single point, even more so when they went into a 2-0 lead in the first half. But their loss is our gain, I suppose, and the fact they couldn't take maximum points against Motherwell is great news for us. In terms of the title race yesterday, nobody made up any ground. Equally, nobody lost any ground, but with the matches kind of rapidly running out at this stage, we're down to 10 now, and given that we were the team playing away from home at a ground like Easter Road, yesterday kind of turned into an okay, dare I say, even maybe good day for Celtic. It wasn't a great performance though, as I say, we definitely got out of jail overall yesterday, and I think that it's only right that we cover yesterday's game the same way we would have if Rangers had won yesterday. I don't think it's right that we would now look at yesterday in a whole different way because Rangers dropped points. I mean, Callum McGregor was actually chatting after the game about only caring about Celtic because that's all he can control. And I want to take a little bit of that into today's video. <laughs> I don't think we can complain too much about the drop points yesterday. It was our eighth league game of 2022, so seven prior to that. We'd won them all. Rangers was a convincing victory. Motherwell was even more convincing. And Hibs at Celtic Park at the start of the year was as routine a victory as you'll ever see Celtic get. But the other four matches, which we did all win, were far from routine. They could have gone either way. You know, we had Hearts at Tynecastle holding on at the end of that match, likewise a little bit at Pataudry, not quite to the same extent, but certainly being clawed back to two each in that game, we were kind of fortunate in the end maybe to, to win that. Also the home games against the two Dundee sides, needing late winners in both of those games. So as much as Celtic have been winning and really getting some good momentum going, yesterday had probably been coming, if we're totally honest, especially when you factor in the games against Bodo Glimt as well. Now, Celtic have played a lot of great football, this season so far. I wouldn't dispute that at all, but this hasn't really been a season that I think will be remembered for great football. I think it's just been a season about winning and finding a way to win when things are going against you. Now, injuries are the main thing that's gone against Celtic. There have been other things, red cards that we've gone on to win matches, setbacks, and it's been a year for just winning and I think that's going to continue between now and the end of the season. It's hardly a massive revelation that Celtic haven't been quite the same since that week when we beat Rangers and Motherwell in quick succession. Seven goals scored, none conceded. That was kind of the, the peak of Celtic under Ange so far. We had players all over the park able to score. I mean, off the top of my head, our, our goals in those games must have been split between about five or six players with others assisting them. Everyone was hungry and it really looked like Celtic were going to kick on at that stage. Not run away with the league, but certainly keep scoring lots of goals every game. It's not really happened since then. We had that Pataudry game when we were great for the first half. But ever since then, we've kind of been slowly declining. We were poor in the second half at Pataudry. The Wraith game in general, we were pretty poor. Bodo Glimt at home, poor. Dundee was, yeah, you guessed it, poor. Last Thursday in Norway was, well, awful. And yesterday again was pretty poor as well. It does strike me at the moment that Celtic are needing a boost from somewhere. We're needing someone to come in and give us a spark. I mean, that's the point Graham Tyrrell is making. The team needs a spark for the run-in. How far off is Kyogo? Is we Dembele worth a shot? Well, absolutely shot Stevie down with his Dembele claim yesterday. I just think he's miles away, you know, in terms of fitness and even just being a reliable option to be that guy who gives us a spark. In terms of Kyogo, the latest is that he's working hard. We're not expecting him back until after the international break. So probably early April, the spark isn't going to come from Kyogo. Could it be David Turnbull, who we're expecting back in training pretty soon? Possibly. 
it just feels like that relentless drive that we had at the start of 2022 has gone. A couple of comments that we got in on this subject. Brenton C saying, it's important to keep a big picture perspective, I think. The Ange way of playing is still being implemented and it's placing a lot of physical demands on the playing squad. When midweek European games are thrown into the mix and the travel, it's no surprise that the team look jaded at times. Keep the faith, people. We're still moving in the right direction. The performances will pick up again. And Christoph is saying, it's hard to believe we're top of the league and yet feel so deflated today brings an end to a lamentable fancy word week Ange has to get this team firing again because despite results we've been awful I think the big picture thing is is the obvious thing we, we we need to look at here the whole boomer bust thing I've spoken about this so often it needs to go because Ange and this squad have already proven that they are worth getting excited about and one bad performance and even a few bad performances in a row doesn't mean that they're all suddenly flops I mean I saw some some mad stuff yesterday about Maida being a flop and even like players like Hatati not being great, that he just had a kind of fortunate start. I mean, nonsense stuff. Um, we're in a brilliant position now in the league. Look at it. We're three points clear of Rangers with just 10 games to go. 10 games to go. You kind of have to pinch yourself when you remember where we were at the start of the year, that we're in such a good position to actually go and win this league over the next 10 games. Of those 10 games, two of them will be derbies, we know that. Six of them will be at Celtic Park, while six of Rangers' 10 games will be away from Ibrox. So I think that's a pretty big thing that I've not seen too many people speaking about. Celtic have played 15 games away from home so far this season. Rangers have played 15 of theirs at home. So that's a major factor. It's all about just ticking them off one at a time, starting on Wednesday. We need to get right back into it on Wednesday, get that hunger back, get another three points going and find that spark from somewhere to keep us going. Now, we're obviously, we'll do a predicted 11 tomorrow on the channel, but I'd definitely be looking for Ange to change his team up on Wednesday night, especially attacking-wise. It just feels a wee bit like it did maybe earlier on in the season when we didn't have other attacking options and it just kind of felt like players could afford to play however they wanted and they would still keep their place in the team. I would like to see him making a couple of bold changes for Wednesday night. Now, I think Yakimakis will, will come back into the starting lineup. I think that's pretty much nailed on. I would like to see Matt O'Reilly back in for the start because he hasn't started too many league games lately and I thought he was certainly better than Rogic yesterday when he came on. I wonder if someone like Gucci could come in to the, the holding midfield role and move McGregor up one maybe. Just shake things up a little bit because it just feels like we've gone a little bit stale. This Celtic team, to me anyway, is a team that thrives on the pressure. I think we're at our best when the heat is on, so to speak. I think that's the saying. Maybe across the city it's the opposite. But it seems like when the players have, you know, real kind of weight in their shoulders. They actually seem to perform better. I know we didn't really see it yesterday, but I just don't feel like Celtic are playing with that same intensity. Hopefully yesterday, not winning for the first time in the league in, I think, eight or nine games and getting away with it yesterday is the real wake-up call that the team needs and we can get that drive back. Maybe they believe their hype a little bit. I mean, they've been getting a lot of praise lately and rightly so. But maybe even subconsciously, they feel like half the job is done in the league, and it's really not. There's loads and loads of obstacles and hurdles we still need to overcome if we're going to win this league, and we need to be right at it and just get that drive back. I feel like, at the, as I say, I keep going back to the start of the year and even December. Remember all those games we had in December where we were chasing Rangers, and sometimes we were going into games... I think like six, seven points behind sometimes and we had to win and you kind of felt like nothing was going to stop Celtic, even a dodgy refereeing decision, which would obviously arrive most games or a bad injury or a you know going behind in a game. You felt as if Celtic were going to come through it. For the first time, I think, you know, in recent weeks, you're having slight doubts about it. Like yesterday, I, I just didn't really feel that goal was coming late on at all against Hibs yesterday. Um, and you know we need to get we need to get back to where we were a couple of months ago, and I think it's easy. I mean, Anne just comments after the game if we play the wee what Anne said thing. Ange said, I thought the players at a difficult venue on a difficult pitch with the opposition sitting deep for the most part were good. It's hard when the opposition sits so deep. 
There are so many bodies in the box to try and find ways through. There were a couple of times when the ball just didn't bounce our way in critical areas, but I thought the players' efforts were excellent. Not sure that I agree with Ange that the players' efforts were excellent yesterday, but maybe this is just him publicly backing the players while behind closed doors he's telling them, you know, that wasn't good enough. Maybe it's just that old managerial game that he's playing. Um, I guess we'll see in Wednesday. We just we need to see that reaction. This is what our next six matches looks like. These, by the way, are the only six games that we know about right now. No other games have been scheduled. So we've got St Mirren at home in midweek and then that game away to Livingston at the weekend. Then we've actually got an eight-day break, which is pretty much unheard of for Celtic in the middle of a season before playing Dundee United in the Scottish Cup quarterfinals. Then it's Ross County at home. Then it's the international break. And then Rangers away and St Johnson at home. There's a real opportunity there for Celtic to get some momentum going. Feels, as I say, like we've lost it a lot in recent weeks. I don't think there's a major need to panic. As I say, we're in a brilliant position. We're three points clear with 10 games to go, but it would hurt a hell of a lot if we didn't win the league now. I think at the start of the year, we were kind of hoping Celtic would win the league and deep down we kind of thought, yeah, it's going to be really difficult given the state we were in in the summer, new team, new manager, etc., now I think the difference is people are expecting Celtic to win the league and the players have a new pressure they have to deal with. As I say, I think in general they're a team who who you know embrace the pressure and rise to it. And I just want to see more of that going forward. We've got two huge games this week. But we're only focusing on one for now. And I think St Mirren on, on Wednesday night is going to be a difficult game. As I say, we'll have a big preview to that game tomorrow. Loads to come in 67 Hill Hill this week. I'm in press actually after the game on Wednesday night, so I'll be speaking to Ange and a player. We'll bring you that on Thursday too. We'll have Scott McDonald on as well, so loads happening. A wee sub update for you at the time of the video going out. Let's see if we can get to 27,000 subs and beyond as soon as possible. Remember everyone, Carol Starfelt is scoring his first Celtic goal when we get to 27,000 subs. Maybe what you're doing is you're just holding off, you're thinking... I'll be clever, I'll sub right before the Rangers game, get us to 27,000 then, and Starfield will score at Ibrooks. I applaud that plan, but no, get subbing now. Let's get us to 27,000 as soon as possible. Let's see that beautiful speed celebrating, and let's get back on track, Celtic. We're back tomorrow.